Hello, now I'm going to go to the second part of the JMeter um, testing and I'm going to focus on the loading. So the difference now is that I'm going to simulate um, hundreds and in, in this case 100 users invoking the system. So well, what is the, the load you can simulate in the system? You need, so you need to define what is going to be the, prof the profile of usage of the system, right? Uh, in this case, it's just to, to an example. I don't expect 100 uh, system administrator one uh, or 100 administrators uh, creating at the same time one uh, course execution or 100 course executions. Actually, each one uh, creates one course execution. Actually, the test I'm going to show you is, the, is they are creating 10 in a row, so each one creates 10. So in total, they are going to create 1,000. But um, but before that, I'm going to show you another uh, load testing where I test the GET course executions service, web service. And uh, what I'm going to do, basically, I want to create 1,000 course executions and then uh, 100 users concurrently get the, all the course executions and they do it again in a row where each one of them uh, do it uh, 10 times in sequence. Okay? So let's see how do I specify it. So you have the variables, we have seen already this, so the global variables. And then the main difference is that you have, uh, we have seen already the teardown. Why do you have the teardown? Because at the end you need to clean the database, right? But um, you have here the, 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 the setup, okay? That's what is different. So if I want to test in this case, get uh, course executions, I need to, in the setup, create the course executions in the database. So what I'm going to do, so to create, I need to log in as an administrator, get the token, put the token in the header of all the invocations I'm going to do, and the content type as well. And then I'm going to do a loop 100 times, 1,000 times loop, where, so it's, it's sequential. What is this is sequential? Because I have a single user doing this, and it's going to do during... 1,000 times and each going to create one course execution each time. And now the problem I have is the data because I, I, I cannot, the, the course execution cannot have the, the same uh, identification, in this case the same acronym. So what I need to do, I, I need to receive data from a file. And what I'm going to do, look, here in this case I do a post, I do the path that evokes the, the web service, okay? And I'm going to use some variables here. And these variables are, are going to be read from a file. And is a file that actually has, should have 1,000 lines. And each line contains the information for each one of the, the, the courses I'm going to create. So how do I describe these variables? Well, before, I have this entity, which is a CSV dataset config. And in this CSV dataset config, I define the name of the file that is stored in close in the same directory than the test I'm running. And then I have the name of the columns. So this is the first column, first type, second column, third column, fourth column, and fifth column. Okay? And these names are actually being used here in the JSON object I'm going to submit. Uh, just uh, something that uh, just teach you my trick to create this data. Maybe you can have a, a smarter trick than I, so tell me if you can do it faster than I. So what I actually do is that I, have a, I use an Excel file. In, the, in this Excel file, I create the columns I need. Okay, But the problem is that some columns cannot be the same. How can I do it quickly? So basically in this case, I have one, two, four, five, six columns, but I only need five, right? Why? The acronym should be different. So I create two columns, one the beginning of the acronym and the second the number. And now, but I need to put them together. So I have another file, another, uh, another year that basically, look at this, I just join them, okay? And then I just generate a text from this and it works, okay? And it's five. It's pretty fast, okay? And I keep this file because now if I need to change something, I change it yet and I regenerate the comma separated value file, okay? So that's what I do here. 
Now let's see how it works. Look, I'm observing results for each one of the phases. Sometimes it's nice. What actually I want to measure from the performance point of view is here. Okay. But here is nice just to see if everything is okay. And so it's nice to do it. So let's run the test and see what happens. Okay, let's do it. So here I am. Okay, he's creating, he's invoc invoking this part. And I can start seeing here the performance. Look, this is sequential. And what is fun is that in databases, sequential is always faster. <laughs> okay. And look, what I am having here is it already created around 400 execution, course executions. And it took in average 53 milliseconds to create each one of them. Okay. And I have the throughput of is, is able to create 17 per second. Okay, and so it's counting. So this is the this is latency, and this is throughput, and this is the minimum latency, the max latency, and this this is the average. Okay, and keep keeps counting. So you will stop at one thousand. Okay, this is the request for the login. Okay, to get the token. So we need to wait, which is um, okay. It this test take time. Take time. So then we can compare with the other case, okay? So everything is okay, there are no errors. Look, there are no errors, everything is okay. It's almost there, 1,000. Yes, now I have 1,000. So now what I have now, I have 1,000, 100 users repeating this 10 times, repeating this invocation 10 times. What is the invocation? Basically is get all the course executions that are in the database. And I can see that, well, it's performing here, okay? And I can see this advancing here as well. So it's already has done 400 uh, queries, okay? And now look, it takes around four seconds. Oh, wow, four seconds. So 500 users asking this concurrently, take a, they need to, to wait uh, for, no, for 100 users, they need to wait for uh, four seconds, okay? Maybe I could try to improve the performance, but I don't expect this to be a, a normal behavior, so probably I don't need to worry about it, okay? I will never have 100 users. Probably I will have 400 students ans answering a quiz at the same time, and I should worry about that, but I will not have 100 uh, administrators creating course executions at the same time. So it finished, look, the throughput is uh, 19 per second, which is not bad, okay? But uh, each one takes quite a while because of contention in the database, I guess, okay? And you have a variation between the mean, the minimum and the max latency. And then you just see, well, for some reason, the GDBC request failed, but okay, it means that it didn't delete the, the, the information in the database. But okay, that's the way the, the test runs. Okay, good. It's always nice to understand what it failed. Look at here. So we have cannot create pullable connection factory. Sorry, too many clients already. So what probably happened here is that when this thread started, these threads haven't released yet. And one solution to this, so this is something that sometimes happens in the databases, so you basically have a number of connections. So if you want to have a lot of simultaneous user, you need to, in the configuration of the database, increment the, the number of con simultaneous connections. So this is the database in my machine. It's, not different, from, it's different from the database in, in production. That's why it's also nice to run these tests in production as well, okay? Because you run them in the real context where the configurations are the actual configurations that are providing the service, okay? Okay, now I'm going to show the, the, the other load testing, okay? Which is actually the one that is about the create, create external course execution load test. So we'll see it's, it's, it's similar. The difference now is that um, I'm gonna yeah, have 100 users where each user is going to create in a loop controller of 10 times, each user is going to create 
10 cost execution. So it's very similar to the, the previous one. Okay. And at the end, I just delete the, 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 the cost executions in the database. So let's run it and see what happens and to observe the performance of it. Okay. And what is nice that you can observe here for sure is that do you remember when we create the course executions in the previous test sequentially? It was something like um, 90 milliseconds, I, I, I think. Now it's going to take two seconds each. So why? So concurrency is always an overhead if you don't have more hardware to, to, to perform it, right? Because you have the overheads of the connections between things. And in this case, we have a lot of conflicts. So, because they are accessing the same information. So that's what I want you to observe when you're going to test your services, is uh, to have an idea about what is going to be the, um, the load of it. Look, it took an average of four seconds to create each course execution. Good. I think that's, that's all. Let's see if it worked okay here. Yes, it's just finished. It, it's okay. So a problem that sometimes you have here is that um, you need to have enough connections in the database. So when you run these tests, and in these tests you launch uh, hundreds of concurrent users, each user takes a thread per request, and then or a connection, and then you, 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 okay, it's not enough connections. And you can increase the number of connections. Of course, if you increase it too much, it depends on, on the capabilities of your machine. Okay, uh, if your machine is, is, is able, the, your hardware is a, able to cope with uh, all these connections. Enough memory, enough, you know. Okay, I think it's pretty enough for uh, JMeter loading, uh, testing with JMeter. Okay, I hope you enjoy it. I think it's really nice to use JMeter. Look, you just have the web service and you can test web service without client. And before, so you can define the quality of the service the service you are going to provide look I've, I've i've done these pretty simple tests but i can do things more complex so i can just decide to have a test that mixes several features so for instance that i create and access at the same time i do several things so i can basically analyze or define what is the expected profile of usage of my application and i create a jmeter script that basically exercises it and see what is the behavior and what is the performance for each one of the, the service I'm invoking. Okay, good. See you in a while with the profiling.